Hey guys, this is Zeddy, and today's video is about vintage Maxell cassettes in a lonely Sony. <laughs> let's begin. So let's start with the Sony, since it's the only one here, and it's not open, it's not uh, unwrapped, and I don't plan on unwrapping it for a while until curiosity gets the best of me because it's the only one I have and I know these are going to be probably hard to come by. I can't place the year because I looked at vintage cassettes and I haven't seen anything remotely like this in any of the photos that they have. <clears throat> but I do know that this has got to be around the 70s, probably early 70s. I do believe this is the U.S. market, and I'll show you why in a bit. So that's how it looks like there. And the interesting bits in the back. So this is a cardboard box. And it's interesting because, um, first of all, this does have the auto sensor foil to activate the alarm facility of Sony cassette recorders. So this is back in the day when um, these players don't actually have auto stop. <clears throat> they probably sure as hell don't have auto reverse. Not unless you get one of those really interesting ones that uh, I've seen on YouTube. Um, the reason why I think this is in the U.S. is because it says this is Sun Valley, California, distributed by Superscope. I find that interesting because Superscope is, I thought it was related to cinema, you know, like movies and stuff. So, not really sure why it's distributed by them, but, or how they got involved. But this is very interesting. Curiosity might get the best of me <laughs> eventually. Anyways, the next one I want to take a look at is um, this right here. This is an interesting one. Um, this one is a 1977 to 79 uh, UDXL2. Uh, you guys probably seen these before, but I'm not sure I've seen anyone a video of it. This one is already unwrapped. You can see this is gold. It's reflecting. I have the light on my iPad's uh, camera and also up there. Ceiling light. So it's kind of reflective. When these came in new wrapped anyways, they were you know, clear. So there was no special wrapping like no art design or anything it's just a clear plastic so what you see here is probably what you'll see if it was wrapped anyway so um, I did not unwrap this this just kind of came the way it was but I find it very interesting that the cassette <clears throat> first of all I'll do the J card first because you know I've never seen anyone show this off so, I guess I will be the first. I could be wrong, I don't know. So, the back we already seen, the actual gold foil cover, but the inside I've never seen before. And very interesting that the original labels haven't been used on this one. big blocky letters and then of course the cassette itself it really looks like it hasn't been used before I mean I could be wrong it looks like it was just recently unwrapped but I, I didn't do it if it was and let's take a look at the big pen Mm -hmm. 
the tape is perfect. Again, that's almost like brand new. It's well calendared, it's nice and shiny. No wrinkles, no no tracks like railroading or anything. It's not even at the very beginning of the tape where you would expect some deformity and wear. I mean, it's just very slight, right? See, it's slight cupping, but that's like where it just meets the leader tape. So, thought that was a pretty interesting tape to show off on camera. Might put it on through the bias, biasing to see how it biases up in test recordings, but I don't think I will use this as my daily driver. Because this is the only one I have. Next up is this guy. This is a 1980 to 1982 UD. Actually, hold on. No, I'm sorry. This one is the 19... 82 to 1983 UD. Sorry, my bad. It's a little later. It's um, just like with the other one. This one's got the foil. Like the shiny foil label. This one is definitely used. Uh, there's something on it. But it looks practically new, so. And again, I can don't know if you guys can see it. Also dark brown, a little deformity at the beginning of the tape. It's basically like hub impressions. It's also dark brown, relatively dark. It's not like tan brown of those normal ferrics. So I don't know. The J card. These look like the 85s, um, 1985 wrappings or J cards. I mean, this is starting to look familiar, doesn't it? Oops, sorry. I thought it was upside down. Oh, that is weird. So this is right side up, but then this is upside down. Interesting. And the label, well, it's already been used by someone. It's got a bit of a shine to it too, you can see. But it's silver to match the silver of this label here. Nothing on the other side. Mm. That's it right there for the 1982 to 1983 UD. I'm actually going to show you guys three of these. <laughs> now, I don't know if the seller or whoever used to own these, the previous owner, 
um, just mis mixed and matched cassettes with their J cards. I probably bet you that's the case. But supposedly these are the 1980 to 1982 UDs. And the first one I wanted to show, well, let's first show the J card because they're all they're going to be the same. Interesting, there's a lot of advertising on the inside of the J card, you know, about, you know, the capabilities of the cassette and the features. You would think that would probably do better on the outside. But they want a decorative, you know, logo, I guess, or a design on the outside. So, the, these guys, well, let me show you this. Well, first of all, I will show you this, the, the tape, around the tape. And these also look like they were used very lightly. So, let me also do the winding. Now that's proper tan brown. <laughs> we saw all the darker browns on the other cassettes. This is what I was talking about, the tan brown. And it's pretty smooth and shiny. So this is not crap tape. Makes me wonder if that sewn was though. I wanted to uh, bring your attention to the hubs. Your eyes are not deceiving you. It's not a camera. You know, like uh, white balance issue or anything like that. You are seeing blue hubs. See that? But there's another version, and this is why I pulled out three of these. It's basically the same cassette. You know, all the design, the way it looks, it's the same, but you can see the hub is actually white. That's interesting. And what about the tape inside? Is it the same? I'm pretty sure it is. Yep. Nice brown ferric. A light brown too, like a tan brown. And the J card's the same. I mean, I'll do a quick once over, but really it's. Oops, sorry, my hair's in the way. I got long hair, sorry. Try to... I try to tie it down, but sometimes <laughs> they have the mind of their own. Now here's the weird one too. Again, it could be just the owner put the uh, the wrong cassette in the wrong case and J card. But notice that this one looks completely different. Got the blue hubs though. And look at the, look at that. That's psychedelic, isn't it? And it's the same brown ferric tape. So that's why I thought that was kind of interesting. Here, let me pull out the other one so you can actually see if you forgot what that other one looks like. But yeah, as you can see, it's been used and somebody already wrote on it. This may be the earlier tape because look, it says 
Tape number 37. This one says a tape number, well, just number 136, because they probably, you know, got sick and tired of writing tape, because, you know, you're just gonna, they, everyone knows it's a tape. <laughs> Um, they just need to put the number down, and it's a sequence. And I got a bunch of these, actually. Um, I want to say 12 of them. So, um, or something like that. Um, and, yeah, they were all written on with pen, unfortunately. But all the record tabs are still in. That's okay. I'll just, if I ever need to record over it, which I will. Um, and if I ever need to label, relabel it, which I won't, I can probably use like a Sharpie to make it even darker and overpower the thin pen lines on these things. But, you know, these are relics. <laughs> so that might not happen. But yeah, that's it, guys. So that's the interesting cassettes that I have. Will I eventually record on some of it. I got a bunch of these, so yeah, probably. I just don't know what I'm going to record it on or record what onto these things. Just like with the 120 uh, UR, I'm not sure what I'm going to put on there. There's a lot of tapes I've opened that eventually I would want to record on, but, you know, I just need some stuff to put, up, put stuff on here, I guess. Um, and I always try to get period correct music and it's hard to find music that I'm into at you know 70s and 60s because I wasn't born in those years I, I didn't my musical taste kind of started during the 90s you know as a teenager as a you know young teen or even as a kid and you know like yeah, I go back cataloging, you know, every so often. And I might go as far as, like, you know, like the early 80s. But, you know, 70s are incidental, like, you know, music that I hear from movies that were used in soundtracks. And I end up liking them, and I might put those on uh, on cassettes, like the 70s cassettes. Um, but, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um interesting cassettes figured out uh, they're already opened i might as well give you guys a tour of the j cards and the cassettes themselves as well hope you enjoy this toodaloo